Hello, everyone, and welcome to a super-sized edition of AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined here by Four Eyes, Nine Lives, Veda Scott, and the human suplex machine himself, Taz. And Taz, I understand we will have a special guest joining us on commentary a little later tonight. Well, absolute Ricky Starks. It's like AEW Stark, not AEW Dark. I told you before. And we'll also have the FCW champ in action, Brian Cage, in this episode. Veda, what are you looking forward here tonight? AEW Stark. Yeah. You had that chambered, huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I am absolutely looking forward to our main event tonight. A huge eight-man tag match. I can't wait to see that. But we got we got Penelope Ford in action tonight. We got Danny Jordan. I don't know. I, I can't I can't make a pick. Is that like an opening monologue that's got to be like three minutes long? In and out. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? That's how we roll here. Well, let's throw it down to the ring and Justin Roberts, unless you would like to hear my very lengthy soliloquy on suplexes. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, straight out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet. Well, we've seen Red Velvet in action before here in AEW and Taz. You like to mention that she's always stirring it up. That's it, she's always stirring it up. She's, oh, as you see her do the finger thing in the, the hand. That's the stirring it up, that's what she does. She's got that swagger. Cash just athletic. did it. He yeah. did it. You can't see it, but he did do I the did whole do it. taunt. Yeah. I love it. I love the little thing. And her opponent being accompanied to the ring by Dustin Rhodes from Detroit, Michigan, Brandy Rhodes. A little Brand Brand doesn't get a shout out? Little Brand Brand, part of the AEW Unrivaled Series 1. Available in stores now. Brand Brand, a hot seller. And Brandy Rhodes, very hot headed after what she went through at the hands of Anna Jay. Yeah, well, that was a vicious, violent beatdown we had saw, you know, when, when Cody uh, lost the AEW, I should say, the TNT Championship. Look at the look, she's really getting the face of. Uh, Red I, Velvet with Lil Brand Brand. I think she's trying to, she's showing her that she looks just like Lil oh, Brand Brand. Oh, you're right, she said that to, remember yeah. that she was saying that. And I, I think I that might, too many chairs. little apprehension here, maybe to take on her own action figure, yeah. That's right, she was saying, Brandy was telling me that she feels Lil Brand Brand reminds her of Red Velvet. Well, also very interesting to point out that uh, Brandy Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes came out of different tunnels, typically the Nightmare family will enter together, but could could uh, could indicate some issues. Wow. Very observant you are. Well, I mean, Brandy Rhodes, she's got a lot on her mind right now. There's a lot going on uh, in terms of everything that she's had to deal with, with Cody, with Anna Jay. But at the same time, she's got her own career in mind here, and this is a big match versus Red Velvet. And she's got to try and capture a win here. And Red Velvet, very athletic. She can look at that nice kip up right there, that arm ringer. And Brandy. Very patronizing there to yes. uh, the Red Velvet. She's just complimenting her. Wow, Velvet. Oh! oh! Velvet got the boot to the midsection. Brandy grabs the side headlock. Red Velvet trying to land some shots. Sends Brandy off into the ropes. Oh. Big shoulder tackle there by Brandy Rhodes. Velvet goes for the trip. With a split. A yeah, very impressive flexibility there. Takes Brandy down, hook of the far leg, one, two. Nice job, good height right there in that, that high leg lariat by Red Velvet. And there's that, it's that gymnastics and dancers background that Red Velvet has. She's extremely, extremely flexible. I think we're gonna see it here, oh yeah. Oh, the split, yes. Look at that smile too, a million dollar smile. Stirring it up and poor Brandy's getting a face crushed there with that split. And blowing a kiss to yeah. Dustin Rhodes in the process. Dustin, of course, just Six days removed from that. Oh, oh the gosh. shot of Brandy wow. right there. And now, wow, Brandy getting on top, laying in some right hands to the head, the face of Red Velvet. Velvet trying to cover up. Vicious, vicious, vicious. Very different from, like you said, the sort of patronizing, mocking demeanor that she had in the beginning of this match. She's definitely taking Red Velvet seriously now. Yeah, she's, she's cutting a promo on her. She's yelling at it while she's beating up on her. Brandy rolls through. Oh, kick to the side of the head. Red Velvet rattled two. No. Wow. I was mentioning Dustin only six days removed from that 
TNT Championship match with Mr. Brody Lee. The family, uh, or the, the issues between the Rhodes family and Dark Order seem to be running deep here in AEW. Sling blade there by Brandy. Covers, deep cover, two. Yeah, that was a strong cover for sure. Yeah, you know, you got to figure, you know, just... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh. So here comes Anna Jay now of the Dark Order. You know, Dark he's... Order's Anna Jay up on the stage, and Brandy oh. just locked eyes with her. Anna Jay likes to call herself the Queen Slayer. And now... Well, Dustin's telling her, be careful, watch behind, you got an opponent here. Oh, kick to the midsection, Red Velvet, oh, DDT! She just spiked Brandy. Dustin was absolutely right, too. That is that veteran Whoa. knowledge. He knew what Anna Jay was out there for. Brandy, though, took a second. She's very emotional about this. She was completely distracted. Now she's got to recover from that brutal DDT. Yeah, that was nasty for sure. You, you, know, you know, once you take your eyes off the prize, your opponent, you could be in grave danger. And that's what happened. And now, look, now you're seeing Brandy getting lit up here by Red Velvet after that DDT. Red Velvet throwing her entire body into those clotheslines. And now Brandy on the ropes. Velvet oh. comes in, pair of knees to the back. She covers. No, Brandy able to kick out. And if Red Velvet can do this, this will be her first victory in AEW. Be a huge upset. Huge upset if she can capture a win over Brandy. Imagine that beating Brandy, one of the one of the stakeholders in this company, as well as one of the big representatives oh. of the women's division. But Brandy hits that spear with that surgically repaired clavicle being driven into the midsection of Red Velvet. Anna Jay, though, not impressed. Yeah, she's not impressed. And then she's got herself a real choke here. It looks like, yep, sure thing. She's got Anna Jay's choke on. Yeah, that's right. She's, Brandy locking in the clean, Queen Slayer, trying to put Red Velvet to sleep. She's got that body scissors on, too. He's out. That's it. The winner of this match, Brandy Rooms. Well, that, that sends a message, you know what I mean? That's Calvo right to Anna Jay. But Anna Jay does not look impressed at all with the performance of Brandy. I think I think Anna is confident knowing that she has gotten under well, Brandy's skin test. I think I think you're right about that. You see right here, like you said, body scissors. Once you get those legs, as you said, Veda, once you get those legs in, in any form of a rear choke and arch your, put your stomach out, arch your back a little bit, you get yourself a choke out, and that's what happens. Brandy really taking some delight in putting Red Velvet to sleep, but no matter what, it was a victory, a hard-fought victory for Brandy Rhodes. A little brand brand. Looks excited. Looks happy about it. That's good to see. Ooh, Brandy or the action figure? Both of them. But Dustin, I don't know. He still looks a little conflicted here. That's just his face. Action coming up next here in the tag team division is the debuting Daniel Garcia and Kevin Blackwood take on the Butcher and the Blade with Eddie Kingston at their side. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first at a combined weight of 371 pounds, the team of Daniel Garcia and Kevin. Blackwood. Well, we are getting our first look at Daniel Garcia and Kevin Blackwood here tonight on AEW Dark and Veda Scott. Very interesting story about uh, Blackwood and Garcia kind of cheating death last year. Absolutely. The, these two men, along with two of their friends, they were in a, a horrific car accident. Not only did they almost lose their lives, I would say at the time they thought they weren't going to have a career at all, and now they're here. They are here competing on Dark, but Taz, they are competing against two of the baddest men in the tag team division. And here they come. And their opponents being accompanied to the ring by Eddie Kingston from Buffalo, New York. At a combined weight of 501 pounds, the Butcher and the Blade. You see that ultra impressive team record of 14 and 6 overall 2020 by Butcher and Blade. As great as our heartfelt story Blackwood and Garcia have, I don't think Butcher and Blade and Kingston care, to be honest with you. Not at all. And uh, Taz, as, as a leader of men yourself, what do you think about the job Eddie Kingston has done getting Butcher and Blade and the Lucha Bros on the same page? I think he's done an excellent job. Whoa, here we go. I think he's done an excellent job, and it's tough if you're Eddie Kingston dealing with four you know, type A personalities in Lucha Bros and uh, Butcher and Blade. And here we go, Butcher and Blade getting right after it. And they are lighting up Blackwood and Garcia. Butcher not even taking his jacket off. 
Yeah, I came into this thing. This is going to be a nice little feel-good story here for Garcia and Blackwood, <laughs> and that might be over before it starts. Although, they've managed to turn it around here. That's right. They've gained All the right. upper hand. Oh, big shot on Butcher and Blade. Garcia jump, charges in with a big boot, sends Blade into Blackwood. And now, whoa, whoa just dumped him over the top. Yeah, turn, he turned, uh, turned Blade, did Garcia. Interesting attempt of a kind of a back foot while he hit the leg hook. Whoa, what? Oh, I thought he was going. Oh, Butcher and Blade. Oh, for the dives to the outside and got, or, excuse me, Blackwood Garcia got swept oh, out oh, by oh, Butcher oh. and the Blade. And this is absolutely not where they want to be, especially not with Eddie Kingston prowling on the outside there. Well, you know, these two young men, Garcia and Blackwood, giving up a, a lot of size. A lot of size, a lot of experience, and as Veda mentioned, that, uh, that, that third man at ringside, Eddie Kingston, never know what King is going to have in store. A nice release, uh, snapping like vertical suplex by Big Butch. And there's no doubt King, uh, you know, definitely King, uh, he's definitely sketchy. Uh, he's, he's, you know, I have a lot of chat with him, a lot of chats with him, I should say. Is, is that because he's from Yonkers? Yeah, it's you not... know, the whole Yonkers thing gets, gets me a little ticked <laughs> off. You know that. Well, uh, we do know you Kingston. consider it to be upstate, so. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. No, uh, Kingston and I are pretty good friends. But anyway, look at Butcher right here, wearing out the facial area of Black. Mike Posey getting in the face of Blade as Butcher using the distracted referee to, to lay in some additional punishment. And this this is interesting to me. Eddie Kingston over there in the corner, he's not really saying anything. He's not really doing anything. He just cut. Now, now he's encouraging, but when they were in the corner, he knew they had it in hand there. And I, I think I, that just shows like the alliance that they have going on here. They're working surprisingly well together considering the, the personalities involved. Well, there's a lot of trust. That there's trust in Kingston. Kingston has trust in, in Butcher and Blade. You know, a lot of experience on all sides. So, but I get your point, Vader, for sure. And Taz, I mean, that's that's important for a coach to know. And sometimes, yeah. no matter how well-intentioned your advice is, if you deliver it at the wrong time, it can be, almost be distracting to your guys in the ring. A great point, Excalibur. That could definitely happen, especially in a tag team match, as you know. There's a lot going on. So Kingston being a veteran himself, he picks his spots on when to coach these guys up. And right now, Daniel Garcia getting worked over. Highly efficient tag team wrestling here by Butcher and Blade. Garcia needs to make the tag out to Blackwood, but right now, Butcher and Blade have very, very successfully cut the ring in half. Made a very rare er er error earlier, Veda and uh, Excalibur. I referenced uh, Garcia as Blackwood. It's very rare to make a mistake, but I'm man enough to admit it. We and all the people watching at home appreciate that test. Blackwood is shot. over in the corner with the blue hair tag. No, I got <laughs> that. <laughs> By the way, you still got that pen? I gave you that pen that time. You what still got pen? the pen? What pen? Is it this pen, Taz? I have it. Right. I have it. Right. I told Keep you I was going to get it back to you. Yeah. Keep I, the pen. It's I all right. told you I would get it back to you. Keep the pen. a family heirloom. But right now, Garcia, <laughs> with the window of opportunity, makes the tag out to Blackwood. Blackwood charges in, ducks the close by dropkick in the corner, takes Blade down. Ooh, big Good right. Fight, yeah. yeah, rights and lefts of the midsection of Butcher. And Blackwood, he had quite oh. a few minutes on the apron to recover here. Mm. Yeah, he's got a lot of speed, though, Blackwood. Oh, 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 that big cross body block, almost 300 pounds coming at you. There's all that recovery for nothing. That's yeah. gone. You're back down to zero right there. All That's the speed tough. in the world doesn't matter if you can't breathe. And Butcher driving the wind out of Blackwood. Blackwood escapes out of the back door, meeting in the mines there for Butcher and Blade. Blind tag by Daniel Garcia. Chops to Butcher and Blade. I'm not sure this would be the strategy I would employ. Yeah, I don't know about throwing hands with these guys, but you know, I respect oh. it. Oh! Brutal backbreaker by Butcher. And now Garcia set up. Oh! The full death! Oh! They have broken him in half! The Butcher and the Blade. Well, Taz. The impressive tag team streak of Butcher and Blade continues here tonight. Yeah, dominant, always dominant. Kingston's fired up. His boys just got it going right there. Very, uh, very powerful statement was made, Veda, by Butcher and Blade. I saw a lot in Daniel Garcia and Kevin Blackwood, though, too. I was impressed by their tenacity. Very, very impressed. But again, Butcher and the Blade standing tall. Yeah, they are a threat to any. Tag team in the division, FTR included. Big match here for Danny Jordan. And she's taking on Penelope Ford and, well, of course, Kip Sabian.
This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first, from Long Island, New York, Danny Jordan. Danny Jordan, the real mean girl, coming out with the burn buck. I believe she's got Penelope Ford's name written down and underlined in triplicate. Veda, I picture you maybe to have a burn book. Like, because you're always so nice, and I think it's a little bit of a front, but behind the scenes, you got like some book. Secretly, I'm just, just, just burying, burying everyone. everyone. I hope that's true. I haven't seen, she, she might have a page for me in there. I haven't seen it. I don't think I want to see it. Oh, you it. got heat with a lot of the girls. I've heard. I'm just saying. From who, Taz? From well, who? From people. Danny Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I read her burn book. That's how. <laughs> And her opponent, being accompanied to the ring by Kip Sabian from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Penelope Fool. Two of my favorite people, you know that Excalibur. Oh, I do, but before this match gets underway, we have to mention not only the upcoming nuptials between Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford, but the debut of the best man last week on Dynamite, Miro. Shocking, shocking. Coming into AEW, at the behest of Kip Sabian. What a story, but that's a story for another time as we have action here in the women's division, the number four rank, Penelope Ford going one-on-one -on -one with Danny Jordan. See what she did right there. She took her engagement ring off, and, and Sabian is so impressed with the ring that he gave her. Look at the size that thing. Are you kidding me? I think he's like a freaking hood ornament, that thing. Huge. The money this guy makes, forget about it. If I had his money, I'd burn mine. Is that Twitch money? I think it's Twitch money he's making. Now. I don't do the Twitch. Are you saying uh, Kip? Yes. Well, he's done pretty well as a professional wrestler, dude. I don't think it's just like playing video games. That's what I'm Twitch just is, trying right? to put over the Twitch thing. He's very into his Twitch stream. Because you Skip want the Samuel. YouTube put over that while people are watching this on. That's what you want. Twitch.tv backslash the Kip she Sabian. He wants to be put over on YouTube by all the fans that are putting everybody else over. I try I not to read the YouTube comments in general as a woman <laughs> in wrestling. That's so this point. is the bad girl versus the real <laughs> mean girl. Point. I feel like there's not a lot. I, there, the I super think bad girl. And the, the only, girl. I, I gotta interrupt you, uh, the only real heel woman in that match, that true heel, is the ref. <laughs> but I just, I feel like there's more mileage I could get jerk. out of that. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Vader, Jesus, more come on, glued part. Sorry, good. <laughs> oh, Penelope Ford just pie faced her. So this, honestly, this here might be a battle of who can be worst to each other. I think it's great. Isn't that what it's about, this business? It's about fighting. It's about rage. It's about hatred. It's about anger. It's not about rainbows and butterflies and poodles. Danny Jordan. Listen, drop if, kick. If, that was awfully misogynistic. Tess. If I thought oh, that we're going to be poodles. Oh, was it really? I don't know. I didn't mean to be misogynistic. Danny Jordan. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you know if it was when you get the, the email from HR. <laughs> And Danny Jordan, she was going for a tope there, which in and of itself is a huge risk for her. She's coming off a, a major knee injury. This is this is one of her first matches back at all from that. So it shows how much she wants to win to just take a risk like that. And, you, you know, I mean, to your point, Veda, the tope suicida, that's how Chris Statlander injured her knee earlier this year against Ooh. Penelope Ford. And so it is a move that's very risky. Cover here. Yeah, she, because if you... As you're doing that tope suicide, if you hit your, if your foot, your instep catches on one of the ropes, that's all you need, and you crash and burn knee first on an apron with your knee, you're gonna, you could basically just blow it out. Well, Taz, I actually set Veda up for that question, but thanks for mansplaining. Well, I just, well, I'm not allowed to speak. Oh, I'll just lay out, no problem. I'll be over here. Do you want your pen, Taz? <laughs> Penelope Ford's got. Keep got Danny Jordan up on the shoulders. Keep the pen. And I'm sorry, but this is impressive. Jordan. Oh! oh, oh. The knees to the midsection. Oh! That gut bust are just impressive every time I see it. Yeah, great strength shown there by Penelope Ford. Uh, Kip, Kip Sabian, he has the burn bunk. I think he's... He's been I think flipping he's, through it. He's well, showing see, yeah, Penelope yeah. her page. Wow. Oh, you're not supposed to see that, Penelope. Oh. And now, could be that Penelope's got a little extra oh. fire here. She is pissed off for sure as Penelope. Super bad girls, angrier than ever. 
I didn't even see what it said, but it must have been bad. Had to be real bad. Oh. Referee Aubrey Edwards catches Penelope, attempting to use the burn book as a weapon. Danny Jordan. Oh my gosh. Rolling Penelope around, hitting her with a series of right elbow strikes. Clothesline takes Penelope off her feet. Second one. What's the footing right there to Danny Jordan? The waist lock chops Penelope down the thrust kick to the jaw. Danny Jordan in the driver's seat here. Waist lock. She's going for a German, but nice block by Penelope. Arm drags are over. Kind of an arm drag, more of a just kind of like a Sayanagi throw, but she like a drop Sayanagi, you would call that, to be honest. Oh, Penelope. That bridge, yeah. Into the stunner. Great avoidance. And now with Penelope in the headlock, or excuse me, Danny Jordan in the headlock, Penelope goes through. Like a, like a bulldog right into the corner. And that top turnbuckle pad, I mean, it's, it's a pad, but it's not very thick. That, that metal turnbuckle still lurks below it. Oh, shotgun drop kick by Penelope Ford. Heard her back on that. She landed hard to Penelope on that drop kick off the top rope, that shotgun drop kick off the top. top. Well, that, that particular move is always a huge risk for yourself. It's very, very physically intense. And now, Fisherman suplex. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Penelope Ford. Oh, well, impressive that Penelope was able to hit that Fisherman suplex with that awesome bridge she has after landing on her back and injuring her back off the drop kick off the top. But Tash, she gets so high up on her toes. Does, is there anybody in AEW that hits a fisherman suplex better than Penelope Ford? Nah, I, I would say she's probably close to, as in the female division, she's definitely on the top. But yeah, she's definitely, she really has a great back arch. You see this. right here how deep she is. That's oh. the key to get your hips in deep. And we've seen her even get a higher arch than that, but I think her back being effective on that drop kick prevented that, but she got the win. And Danny Jordan may think twice about adding any new names to her burn book as Penelope Ford getting her hand raised is victorious here tonight on Dark. Talk about massive, talk about gigantic, the FTW World Champion, the Machine, Brian Cage, a proud member of Team Taz, in action next on Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Buffalo, New York, weighing 234 pounds, Megabyte Ronnie. Well, Megabyte Ronnie making his AEW debut here tonight in Veda Scott. I understand Ronnie, a competitive eater. He is a competitive eater. He is the ranked number 18 in the world competitive eater. I don't know how you know what he eats? What's he eat? What does he eat? I have a list of what he eats. Okay, he let me hear it. He has eaten 27.5 pork roll sandwiches in eight minutes. That's a lot. 134 wings in 10 minutes. 28.5 hot dogs in 10 minutes. 10.5 pounds of strawberry shortcake in eight minutes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's a whole lot of food. Okay. So, the guy Ronnie is 236 pounds. Here's a meal for this man coming out right now. See, that's the machine right there, Ricky Starks. That's your man, that's my man. But let's listen to Justin. Go ahead, Justin. And his opponent, from Chico, California, weighing 278 pounds, the machine, Brian Cage. What an absolute <laughs> unit. What a, what a great guy. I love him. Look at him. He's the man. Carved out of steel. Oh, Brian Cage is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, really, I've, I've, you know what, Ricky? I've Ladies and gentlemen, him. he is oh, the FTW champion, the machine, Brian well, Cage. It's actually FTW world champion. That's a world title, Justin, if that is your real name. Well, you could forgive Justin Roberts for being intimidated by the machine, Brian Cage. Here I thought, Tad, you were gonna be happy because he announced the championship, but no, not, not, not quite there. Well, let's, I mean, let's announce it correctly, Excalibur. I was relieved yeah. when I heard go. him start. Tad Ricky, Ricky Starks. A Ricky Starks, how many zebra cakes do you think you could put away? Absolutely none. I don't eat that crap. Come he on. Abs like he has. Forget him. about it. Look at the machine, Brian Cage. Oh. And look at oh, Brian Ronnie. Go. Ronnie, though, escapes out of the grip of Brian Cage. And oh, oh, that's what I'm saying. Mega bite, mega tackle. That's what that is. The Break greatest sugar tackle you were ever asleep. <laughs> that was a good one. You were ever asleep. 
Cage the uppercut backing Ronnie into the corner and just continuing at the assault. I have a question for you two, Excalibur. Baby. You ever had a bat against your, your chest swung 90 miles per hour? That's, what, <laughs> that's how Brian is with just one bicep. That's what that feels like. Like a ball bat hitting you right in the chest. That's horrific. I don't really want to think about that it sucks. happening. It just, the training sessions with the machine Brian Cage and Ricky Starks is unbelievable. And as I said, Ricky Starks is a Ferrari and Cage is a Hummer. Vroom, vroom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, bro. I love it. Yeah, Megabyte Ronnie. What's the deal? Alex Calvin eats like a bunch of hot dogs, right? Brian Cage has had a hot dog since he was nine years old. Okay, he doesn't put that kind of fat and calories and sodium in his body. It's not even real meat. No, it's not real meat. It's for, it's for heathens. Yeah. Hot dogs. We eat filet. Oh, big boot up there by Megabyte Ronnie. So and Megabyte Ronnie is not just a competitive eater. He actually was in the Army. He served in Afghanistan. And when I talked to him, he told me that it was while he was dodging bullets that he realized that he's got one life to live, and he's going to do it how he wants to. That's what got him into competitive eating and eventually into professional wrestling. Well, I, 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 I respect that. Yeah, I respect, respect him that. serving our country. I do. But he's still going to get his ass kicked in this match. Oh. See what I'm saying? Oh. Oh. Perfect timing with that comment, Ted. Well, it's not my first rodeo, Vader. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Some close line. Do you like that X Cal? <laughs> Left arm lariat uh, by the machine, Brian Cage. Oh, well, Mega oh, by Ronnie. Cage. Look at that now, switch by Cage. Yeah, no, we are right. It's here. slippery out there. Oh, Rip Ripcord. Cord, Ripcord Jones. There it is. Ronnie, though. Oh, oh my. I don't know what the hell that was. What? It's the baby oil. Oh, he's used that new baby oil. Now, baby what? oil. Look at this, Mega by Ronnie. He's in his little hot dog pouch. Are you ripping he's got oh, a no. hot dog. What the, what the hell? hell? Is, this dude is actually going to pull a hot dog out during a match. Well, Brian Cage may not have had a hot dog since he was eight what? years old, but now he might have one at the hands of Megabyte what Ronnie. Doing? What are we doing here? What am I seeing? Oh, no. Brian, get up, Don't Brian. Do that. Get up. Megabyte Ronnie. Yes. Ah. I swear I'm going to flip this table over. Dude, I the elbow. I'm going to run out of here. I'm going to throw these headsets oh at somebody. Come on, Brian. Guess Damn what? it. Oh. Cage is mad. He should be mad. There's freaking hot dogs oh. all over the ring. Oh, he just kicked his face off. And when you're a competitive eater, that's a liability. Look at that. It's an area code shot. <laughs> Brian Cage with a tiger faint kick. I actually named that thing back in the day, but that's another story. And now he's got Mega by running. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Right a hot dog. Come on. Hit him with a knock worse. <laughs> Go ahead and eat your weight in that, the folks. Match. I love the Come on. The FTW World oh. Champion, the Machine, so Brian Cage. Yeah, we don't eat I, stuff. You will find no bigger tube meat enthusiast than myself, but <laughs> shocking. Megabyte Ronnie got worked by the FTW World Champion, Brian oh, Cage. Oh, yes, my friend. Look at this, this drill claw. It's all over but the proverbial shouting. When that happens, as we know, Brian Cage, ever so dominant. It was just one tiny glimmer for Megabyte. Megabyte Jones, but it wasn't enough. Look at that, right? That's the shot right there, Ricky. Look at that, buddy. Beautiful. I'm glad Escal put respect on the FTW title. Damn right. Oh, that's disgusting. I'm a vegetarian. I don't that really want to that see thing. that. Lucky. Disgusting. Coming up next on Dark, two proud members of the Inner Circle, Santana and Ortiz, in action against Garrison and Pillman Jr. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first at a combined weight of 453 pounds, the team of Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. We've seen these two men team up a couple times before. They've looked impressive. They seem like they're on the same wavelength, but they are going to have a tough test ahead of them against a very motivated Santana Ortiz heading in to that parking lot brawl with best friends this week on Dynamite. And their opponents. From New York, New York, at a combined weight of 425 pounds, Santana and Ortiz. That's pretty well documented that us people in Team Taz don't like many people, Ricky, you know that. Absolutely. But I gotta say, we got some respect. Oh, no, 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 Ortiz, I'll put you over, bro. It's don't worry about, about love, it. Baby. It's nothing but love here, man. 
Uh, look, we don't like many people. Yeah. But Santana Ortiz, yes, I think we, we kind of like them. If I was in a bar and I needed two guys to back me up besides you and Cage, mm. these two right here I'm with, would absolutely I'm with be my back. You go to those fine wine clubs, man. You're not hanging out with no, like them. I like to get a little. I've you know. seen the way you roll outside. I mean, Excalibur's never invited, or Veda Scott. That like is your real money. name, Veda Scott. By the way, how's that pen? You still got that pen I gave you? I, I keep do. Talking it's right here. That. I keep trying to give it back to you. I told you I was only borrowing it. Keep the pen, counselor. I don't counselor. even want it. Keep the pen, counselor. Thief. That's what it is. Santana and Ortiz, of course, are a very established tag team in AEW. They're currently ranked number five, but we see Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman, they're working to establish themselves as a team. If they can beat someone like Santana and mm. Ortiz, like that, I think, would just silence any doubts that anyone might have, but that is quite a task. Yeah, Garrison and Pillman definitely with a big opportunity here. We can see if they, how they've coalesced as a tag team, but Santana and Ortiz, for as tough as they are, they are tremendous practitioners of tag team art. And Pillman, oh, a little, a little tap, of the, tap of the boot to the face of Santana. Well, I'm from the same neck of the woods that Santana and Ortiz are from, and that doesn't happen on the streets. I can promise you that. Maybe that's why Pillman did it. Yeah, and that's why Santana wasn't really effective. How about that, Dan? And oh! oh. Santana runs in that big back elbow. And a Ooh, right nice. kick to the back of the and head. That's what it's all about. Disrespect. Well, guess what? We got a receipt coming. Huh? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, that's the thing. You, hey, that's what happens. You can't. You play around with a guy like Santana. He's gonna slap Ooh. you around. He's gonna catch you. Pillman's a hell of an athlete. Definitely hell of an athlete for sure. I see Garrison. Oh, stuff. You're giving up a lot of experience here to Santana and the team. Santana dropped him with that open-handed shot. And this week on Dynamite, I mentioned it will be Santana Ortiz versus Best Friends parking lot Brawl Veda. Who do you like in that tag team matchup? So, if you're just looking, Griff. it was Ooh. a tag right there. Griff so is legal, by the way. If you're just oh. looking at the teams themselves, normally I would have to go with Santana and Ortiz, right? That's a little bit more of their game, but the escalation of this rivalry. Oh! oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> He's has risen. You were saying the escalation. Speaking of escalation, of the I think yes. we just picked up here. But I'm looking at Trent, I'm looking at Chuck Taylor, and just the, the personal animosity involved in this, I don't know, I'm not taking them They're lightly. fighting for Sue's honor. Oh, big splash in the corner. Ricky, who do you like in the big parking lot brawl? I'm glad you asked me, because I was actually gonna step in there. Yeah. I'm telling you, these two, Santana, Ortiz, Ortiz yeah. Money. Money. There's no doubt in my mind. I should Come talk on. to Jericho, see if maybe we could work together. Santana Ortiz with Team Taz. That would be something, boy. I'll tell you that. But Taz, right. AW Dark is not for networking, Taz. What do you mean? No, it's oh, yeah, that's, you that's, take, that's take that to Twitter. Twitter. Says the lawyer. LinkedIn. Oh, gosh. That was funny. Leapfrog up and over <laughs> the top. Oh, the Bulldog driving Griff Garrison into the canvas. And now oh, oh, a little oh, ghetto oh, clutch there. One, yeah. two. No. no. Garrison able to kick out. He's Gotta watch so yeah. yeah, he's quick, man. Ortiz is quick. You see, he, he, see, he pulled back. He pulled back. Ooh. He saw Garrison was up to something. That's what you should do, man. You know that, Ricky. Light Don't him rush up. it. Don't rush into it. You know what I'm saying? Garrison holding the back of his head. He's a little rattled Ooh. here. Garrison's a lot rattled. He gets taken down. Kick right there in the solar plexus. Knocked the whole wind out you. Yeah, yeah, sure did. And you can see he's holding his, his head. He's nice rocked. gut wrench right there at the suplex. Perfect. Ortiz getting low, popping the hips. Bringing Garrison over the top. It's all about poise, and that's what Santana and Ortiz have. They're poised. The man to my left, absolute Ricky Stark. All poised. It's about poise, Excalibur. You know that. I know, and that's poise is a word they teach in the Ivy Leagues, Taz. Oh, don't set me. You know what? Don't start. No, because don't start him. No, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about the Ivy Leagues because the kid Garrison. Yeah, Garrison. yeah, that's what he's yeah, 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 Now I gotta take the shades off because yeah. he's starting to do that stuff. You see Excalibur. Everything was going great. It was. Shades are off, people. Great. You can't see it, but the shades are off. <sighs> Taz Santana yeah. Ortiz wearing orange boots. I'm yeah. sure you love that. It's a little heat. But uh, Griff yeah. Garrison with the orange wristband on. Good shout out. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's been wearing those orange wristbands. Oh, Griff Garrison. Goes over the top boot to the midsection of Ortiz. Nice reverse. Oh, oh, oh left short hand. Short yeah. arm with a close line. Oh, Left is short, close, a little most muscular. Look at the physique of this Ortiz. Oh. He's a beast. I Ripped. thought that might be the opening Griff Garrison needs to make that tag because Brian Pillman is fresh. He is up on the apron. He is ready to go. 
Yeah, well, he's just sitting there looking pretty with his mullet right now. These guys have great oh. hair. I would like to point that out as well. I don't I don't want to take anything. What about the fashion from... sense right now, Ricky, of Santana Ortiz? Will you feel those overalls? The camo Ortiz? overalls, I give it two thumbs up. All right, it's fresh, right? Yeah. Out of how many possible thumbs? I have two thumbs, oh, okay. Excalibur. Yeah, Excalibur, you have no style, how many, sir. How many? Jeez. You could hire someone. To just come in with extra thumb. Part of the Team Taz social media team. Perhaps. Oh, we have, we have many fashion what? consultants. We have all sorts of people that Ricky aligns us with. Yeah. We have a lot of people. I can we hook you with. up, Veda, because I'm looking right now, and I can definitely hook you up with someone. <laughs> oh, big right oh. hand by Ortiz to the face of Brian Pillman Jr. Garrison, though, rolling elbow strike. He's got... He's got Ortiz on roller skates. Yeah, he, rock, he definitely rocked Ortiz. Garrison got some fight in him, man. Look at it. He's got to try and get Pillman in this match, does Griff. Yeah, right. this is a matter of who can make a tag here. Ortiz is hurting. Very desperate situation, and Garrison does make the tag out to Pillman. Pillman comes in, clothesline, takes Ortiz down. Santana right there. Pillman Jr. ducks under the... Ooh, he's fired up. Rifling him. With those chops, big lifting uppercut there. Pillman hits the ropes. Santana a step quicker. Ducks the clothesline. Tope, oh. suicide on Garrison. Great job by Santana. <laughs> Thrust kick there by Bill, Brian Pillman Jr. Yeah, don't wait. Don't wait. You got him, right? You got Ortiz where you need him, Pillman. The delayed vertical suplex. Ortiz lands on his feet. Here we go. Pops him up. Whoa. Wow, power bomb in here. Sit down, power bomb. Beautiful. Strength by Ortiz. Oh. oh! Great chemistry and teamwork by Santana and Ortiz. Oh. Great execution. I'm loving it. He just cracked him right in the temple. The, the, the chemistry, the timing of knowing where his partner was was tremendous wow. right there. Oh, what is this match? Santana and Ortiz. Veda, I believe this match was fought with the intent to send a message to the best friends. Absolutely. I mean, I can still hear the sound of the toe of that boot just cracking off his skull. Yeah, well, best friends are going to have their hands full with Santana Ortiz. I don't care what happened to Sue's minivan. Ricky, you would never be in a minivan, right? Absolutely not. We're riding caddies, bro. We're in a, a minivan. No, no, I have a minivan. Shocking. Well, best yeah, friends, watch out because Santana and Ortiz are coming for you. Up next on AEW Dark, we have Jesse Sorensen returning to face Willpower, Will Hobbs. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Waco, Texas, weighing 213 pounds, Jesse Sorensen. Big, tough Texan Jesse Sorensen making his return to AEW Dark here tonight. Big opportunity against another up-and-comer here in AEW. Yeah, someone that uh, turned a lot of heads back it all out in the Casino Battle Royals about to enter the fray here. And his opponent from East Palo Alto, California, weighing 252 pounds, Will. Ha! Stop. You're not impressed with Hobbs? Absolutely not. Come on, <laughs> man. Hold on a second, Ricky. I, listen. The entire, all of Twitter, everyone is talking about Will Hobbs. Twitter? Who gives a rat's ass about Twitter? Yeah, come on, Veda. Which one, what was that? Twitter? What are you kidding me, Veda Scott? Yes, I have seen you do your fair amount of Twitter beefing, okay? Do you think that's but, me? I hire people to do that for me. Yeah, come on. Give the it the program. The social media team of Team Apparently, Taz. Yeah, Team yeah, Taz rolls it. deep, apparently. That's right, Veda. Deep pockets, baby. <laughs> well, I'm impressed Ooh. with Will Hobbs. Oh, Excalibur, you're impressed with Will Hobbs. Absolutely. <laughs> and he... Jesse Sorensen better be impressed by Will Hobbs. Yeah, he just got trucked by him, and now oh, Hobbs. Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah, he's a big, powerful man, Hobbs is for sure. And, Taz, you mentioned that uh, Casino Battle Royale at All Out. Will Hobbs really, I mean, he set the world on fire that night, made a huge name for himself, and then came back a couple days later, picked up his first AEW victory oh. on Dark last week. Yeah, no, he's been impressive. And, you know, listen, 
It's just got to stand. Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, they're both very competitive Whoa. men. So oh. it's tough. It's tough, Ricky. You understand. You're not going to give much much L light to anybody. I will give credit where credit is due. This dude is a, a powerhouse here. Yeah, but yeah. listen, did you see how much yeah. I squatted? Did you oh, see how much I did? Oh, no. I've, on. I've spotted you. Of course I know. Oh. Jesse Sorensen gets the kick to the back of the head on Hobbs, staggers him towards the center of the ring. Sorensen. Oh, no. Whoa. Big spine buster right there, man. Speaking of Twitter, that is one of the more gifable moments every single week on AEW Dark. I swear Dark. the Twitter oh, comments are getting me so angry. Give I have no idea, break. Ricky. They really get me upset. Give me and a I break, like Vader. I mean, it's like Hobbs with Jesse Sorensen oh. hoisted up over his shoulder. Will big Oklahoma stampede three. Wow. That's all she wrote. Impressive. No winner of this match. You know, I'll give him that. Yeah. Impressive. Huh. That was a statement victory by Will Hobbs, Ricky. <laughs> a statement. I think that's more of a comma there, but whatever. Go yeah, on. I mean, it was impressive. I, I kind of agree with Ricky Stark's Excalibur. You know, it's it was impressive. It wasn't like, oh, my God, what a win. It was good. Veda, I it thought was it was good. a really good win. I think it, that's, that's two in a row now for Will Hobbs on AEW Dark. Right here's the replay. What a spine buster. Two in a row. Do you realize how many victories Ricky Stark's has? Come on. Seven goes to heaven, Veda. Ah, that was a good one. Seven goes to heaven. <laughs> I love that. That was good stuff, bro. That was right good. Now with that. I like well, that. Will Hobbs victorious here. Ricky Starks victorious over simple wordplay. Stay tuned. We've got more action coming up next. Rache Chanel and Skylar Moore team up to take on the winners of the first ever AEW Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament, Eva Lise and Diamante. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, the team of Rache Chanel and Skylar Moore. Rache Chanel, Skylar Moore making their tag team debut here tonight. And Veda Scott, uh, I know you changed in the women's locker room. What was the, uh, what was the word between these two first time partners here tonight? So again, they're first time partners, but as you can see, they're already very cohesive. Um, in terms of the locker room, there were just, there was like several suitcases, trunks of clothing. Oh. I don't know why they have so much stuff with them. Well, Rache Chanel, she's, um, yeah, she's all about the fashion, Ricky, yeah. you know that. Look at her. I mean, she's, she's Gucci'd out. What's the other one, Fendi? What's the other one? That's Barbara oh, Chanel, Chanel actually. Down. Excuse me, Excalibur, a fashion expert to my left was speaking to you. Oh, I'm on your right. I know, but I meant left. And their opponents. You're the right. The team of La Sicaria, Ivelisse, and Diamante. It's not always about you, Excalibur, but go ahead. Tell me about Ivelisse and Diamante, the tournament. They were victorious. Go ahead, Excalibur. Well, go I was going to actually let the person that sat alongside the illustrious Tony Schiavone. He's not illustrious. I can oh, promise yeah. you that. <laughs> yeah. Veda, you called all their matches in the Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament. Even Lise and Diamante looked extremely impressive. Uh, absolutely. So not only did they come out victorious, but I think they established themselves as a tag team force. Now, this is the first time that they've teamed up since the tournament. And I think they're just looking to put everyone on notice. I've known both of these women for a very long time. I've wrestled Diamante many, many times. She is one of the toughest human beings, male or female, I've ever been in a ring with. And Ivelisse, just from watching her work, I honestly don't want to be in a ring with her because she seems that just scary. And uh, to your point, uh, Veda, both Ivelisse and Diamante have a, 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 over a decade of experience each. Right. So they're very experienced uh, female athletes. Collar and elbow tie up, center of the ring. Ivelisse immediately Oof. going after that, that wrist of Skylar Moore. Skylar Moore, though, springs to her feet. Rough takeover there. Second Oof. arm drag. And Ivelisse, oh, whoa. Whoa. hip toss. Okay. Skylar Moore, scoop, and a slam. Ivelisse escapes out of the back door. Smart break down the back of that knee, the left knee. Kicked her. Ivelisse kicked her right in the crook of that knee. The and fight ain't gotta be clean and nice, no, you know? No, 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 no. Not at all. Well, I, I've never seen a pretty fight that I've been in anyway. Or you. <laughs> okay. Have you seen me? <laughs> no, come on. Nah. Come on. It's not about us, though, now, bro. You know that. Of course not. No. Sorry, sorry, Excalibur. You, sorry. Tag out to Roche Chanel. And now we also last saw her in the Tag Team Cup, cup Tournament. That's right. She was uh, partners with Leva Bates, eliminated in the first Ooh. round, but that spinning that back so elbow sharp. there. That was a Beautiful. great back elbow. Right on the money. 
I'm actually a big fan of uh, Rache Chanel. I, I love her fashion sense. Oh, you can see, I could definitely, I mean, I could see her definitely giving some advice with you towards yeah. Brian Cage. Not me, but more Brian. I could see that. Oh, 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 oh. Diving back elbow there by Diamante. Oh, but Rache Chanel counters. Arm drag. And another. Skyler Moore, Rache Chanel employing the arm drags to uh, great effect here. Now rolls. Diamante threw very unorthodox uh, takedown there. Toodles, I love it. It's great. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> oh, whoa. Ooh. Went for the kick. Diamante caught, countered, rolled Chanel through, and hits the uppercut. Oh, she's looking bad. She's got to make a tag. Tess. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Well, see, Diamante, smart veteran instincts, pulled her, her opponent in towards where Ivelisse is. That was smart by Diamante to do that. And I know you said she needs to make a tag. I don't disagree, but it might be too Ooh. late for that because we've seen this before. When Here's a cover. When Diamante and Ivelisse are able to isolate their opponent in their own corner, they are ruthless. Yeah, no, good point, good point, Vader. They are definitely aggressive, violent. Oh. You can see Ivelisse right here smashing Rache Chanel's head on the back of the canvas. Chanel getting rocked here by La Sicaria. Ivelisse, the kick across the spine. And now, ooh, going for that dragon sleeper there. Look at that. And got it hooked in tight. Driving the knee into the spine I mean, of Rache Chanel. She clasped her other hand, you know, the, the overhook hand. She would definitely have a much tighter choke maybe for a choke out. But Chanel getting to her feet. Blocks the oh. right hand of Eva Lee. Oh, wow, look at those shots. Those forearms are heavy. Loving the intensity from her, yeah. But Eva Lee shut her down very quickly. Got those arms butterflied here. Got a clash. Drives her down. Cover one, two. And Evely just has a full handful of hair here. Yeah, just hanging on to the head of Rache Chanel. There's a good chance referee Mike Posey's afraid of uh, Evely. Oh, oh my oh. God. Veda, oh. you said oh. you've been in the ring with Diamante. She looks to be, in my estimation, one of the hardest hitters in the AEW women's division. Absolutely, and she again is another woman who has spent her career fighting men, fighting women. You know, she doesn't necessarily have the size advantage oh, in any of her matches, and she's had to make up for that in just toughness. A clothesline by Diamante, hooks the far leg. Uh, to that point about Diamante, Veda, she, as you know, she overcame a very serious knee injury few years back and was able to return a, you know, following that year, which is tough to come back from a reconstructed knee. Uh, it's a tough thing to do and, and compete at this level. I'm, I'm always just shocked by that when I learned that someone had, ooh, Rache Chanel, she's fighting back here. Uh, a potentially career-ending injury, just not just the physical aspect of it, but the mental aspect of it. Oh, oh that's what I'm talking wizard. about. That's my girl right there. From Rache Chanel, <laughs> hook of the far leg. <sighs> Diamante. Fires that shoulder up off the canvas to kick out. She would have had the other leg hooked, I'm telling you. That would have been it. Yeah, you're speaking on Rache. Yes, yes. yes sir. Oh, here comes Diamante and Skyler catch him with a clothesline. Back elbow. Her Eva Lee's taking off her feet again and Whoa. again. And Skyler Moore with a head of steam here. Charging in. Nobody home. Eva Lee uh, walked into the boot of Skyler Moore. A little overzealous. She got caught. Whoa. A little head scissors take down there by Skyler Moore. Scooping Eva Lee's up and front, oh, front oh. slam. Front slam, hook at the leg. No! Oh. Good save by Diamante. That was smart. And Eva Lee's did not kick out of that. It was Diamante who broke up the pin. I mean, that was almost over. And what a win that would have been for Rache Chanel and Skylar Moore. Oh, great point. It would have oh. been a massive oh, win. No. Skylar Moore sent into her partner. Uh -oh. Backstabber by Diamante. Skylar's alone with Eva Lee's and Diamante now. Eva Lee's rolls. Oh, oh, the kick to the face. Good night, Skylar Moore. The winners of this match, the team of Eva Lee's and Diamante. Will Veda, Eva Lee's, and Diamante continue to be a force as a tag team here in the women's division? Absolutely. Both as singles and tag team competitors, it was that same rolling kick that won them the tournament in the first place. Let's see, there's a replay coming up here. Well, you see here, just as Skyler rolls through that snapmare oh. and then boom, oh. right in the face. Lights out. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's it, Ricky. Once that happens, you're done. <laughs> and this week, coming up on Dynamite, Eva Lease will challenge Thunder Rosa for the NWA World Women's Championship. 
Well, an impressive performance by Eva Lise and Diamante. Impressive performance by Ricky Starks making his first appearance here in the commentary booth. Thank what you. What did you expect? Did you expect something less than that? Because <laughs> I didn't. Dark Orders, Colt Cabana going one on one with QT Marshall of the Natural Nightmares. And you have to know, Ali will be at his side and they will be looking for revenge. This bout is set Cole for Cabana. one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, being accompanied to the ring by Ebert Uno from Maxwell Street in Chicago, Illinois. Weighing 242 pounds, Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Well, back at All Out in that big eight-man tag team match, Dark Order. Versus, oh, it was supposed to just oh. be Evil Uno, but apparently Mr. Brody Lee sending the whole Dark Order out. Mm. Not a lot of trust placed yeah. in Colt Cabana by Mr. Brody Lee, but you have to remember, Taz, it was Cabana that was pinned by Dustin Rhodes in that eight-man tag team matchup on All Out. Yeah, and that, that was big. That was big, and that's something that really ticked off Brody and, and, you know, and all of the Dark Order. So you said a trust is a lack of trust for sure. And Cabana looks a little shaken here, but this is a chance for him. This is a big chance to just redeem himself in the eyes of Mr. Brody Lee. After remember, Cabana has, had never seen that side of Dark Order before. And his opponent being accompanied to the ring by Ali from the Big Apple, weighing 234 pounds, Q.T. Marshall. Taz, that was a risky move by Q.T. Marshall turning his back on Dark Order like that. Yeah, no, no, there's no doubt about it. You see, now he's looking at it, but it was quick. I get your point, but it was quick. And Q.T., you know, he comes out, he comes out like he's humble jokes, but he's actually a very crafty, cagey veteran, okay? He's from the Big Apple. So that's New York for those that don't know. And he's got a little bit of an attitude, but he comes off like he's Humble Joe. He's not. Humble Joe, Humble Joe. Both. No, okay. just humble anything. Humble pie. He's not a humble man. This match getting started. Colin Elbow tie up there. Cabana immediately taking the waist lock of Marshall. Cabana rolling through and dropping QT Marshall down. That's uh that's the, the British influence on Cabana's style. He spent many a summer yeah. in the UK working those uh, those campground shows. Sure, and that out, it was an outside drop toe hold, but you don't see much from the back. Nice switch right into a hammer lock by QT out of that side headlock. So these are two guys that know how to grapple, know how to you know exchange holds. So this should be pretty interesting. Yeah, Cabana, Veda, I believe a little bit more unorthodox, at least to the American audience, than QT Marshall. Right, like you were saying, his his depth Ooh. of grappling knowledge is things that I think a lot of people that he's in the ring with may not have even seen before unless they've been, been studying very old footage. Right. And that's a huge advantage. Beautiful Tierras there by Cabana taking Marshall down. And you see Ali trying to get whoa, whoa. QT Marshall focused and back into this matchup. Ali's all over QT. That's a tough uh, relationship they have there. And usually she's, Allie, always, she's always disappointed in, in QT. You know, it's tough. To be fair, I think Ali is disappointed in most people. To well, I can relate. General. I can relate to that. I can relate. I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of people in my life, and I'm disappointed in all of them, to be honest with you. But I digress. Oh, uh, we're to your right, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Come back. Oh, man. QT Marshall up to the corner. <laughs> man, and look, oh, oh, yeah. and there, there's Stu Grayson. He's, he's hitting the ring. And he's lost his temper, Stu. He's like, what are you doing here? Oh. What's going on? Swinging a miss by Cabana, but QT found Mark with that right hand. Irish whip into the ropes, back elbow drops Cabana down to the canvas. If there's any little opening for a veteran like QT Marshall, he's gonna exploit you, and that's exactly what happened. And, and Stu Grayson lost his temper from the stage area. And it was Evil Uno who's trying to just calm the situation. It, it seems like he's been the most, I, I guess you'd say, su supportive oh. of Cabana as he tries to, yeah. to figure yeah, this no, out. Cover, cover, cover. cover here. Two. And I don't know if that's his own personal feelings or just maybe, I don't know, it's kind of seeing like the long game here. Well, you, you know, saw you saw when Cabana popped up on the middle rope, went through the legs of Marshall. He actually looked up at the stage yeah. for approval from Dark Order, and that act, that's what, that cost him. That's why he caught that drop kick. And you're, you're trying to recruit new members. You want to, oh, hold on. Hold on, here's five and ten. Oh! oh! And finally, Cabana taking advantage of the, the opportunity presented to him by Dark Order. 
cover here. Hook in the far leg. Only a two count for Cabana. That's an old school splash. You might see if you're watching wrestling from 1932. Right might there. call it a Matt classic. Yeah. Yeah, what's Matt Relic? That type of move. Not even a classic. Cabana driving the point of the elbow into the head of QT Marshall. See the new trunks by QT in the back says NN, Natural Nightmares. It's tough to see because, as I pointed out, he's been to Vegas. Remember that line? I don't want to bring it back. We have a lady at the table. Look at QT, though. Uh, Cabana also with some new attire here. Oh! Whoa, what the? Oh. Crazy shot. Oh, look at that elbow. Rocked him with the elbow. After that hammer throw into the corner, Cabana covers. Two. Cabana knows better than that, Taz. Yeah, he does. He, he can't have a lax days with a cover like that. But sometimes, now there's a cover. There it is. That was a lot deeper that time. Yeah, sometimes you cover someone just to have them exert energy. You know you're not going to get the win. It's just it's strategy. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that, but it is sometimes. I don't know if that's what Colt was doing. Maybe he was, maybe he was. I'm not sure. Oh, man. That The point of the elbow into the oh into the, the, the traps of, uh, yeah. of QT Marshall. And now, can't tell if it's just a, a nerve hold yeah. or if he's... He's grabbing at his traps and just squeezing like a nerve hold. Which, as you know, can knot up real easy, especially when you elbow someone there a few times. QT here trying to fight out of that. The look on Cabana's face, though, it's it's aggressive, it's frustrated. Obviously, he wants to win here. That's that's why he started associating with Dark Order in the first place. But he also has, metaphorically, Mr. Brody Lee looking over his shoulder right now. And you have to remember that it was it was all going so well for Colt Cabana. He was winning. He put together an impressive series of wins until All Out came along. Right now, QT's in a bad way. He's got to try to turn his body and face Cole Cabana. It looks like an easy move to get out of. It's actually not. Oh, nice. And Cabana using QT's momentum against him. Oh. The digging right elbow. Beautiful shots. Cabana reverses the throw to the row. Oh. Big tackle yeah, there. Yeah, flying shoulder. Manhattan drop from QT Marshall. The scoop and the slam. Cole Cabana, he's down and out and hurting, and QT, he's going up top. You don't see QT fly much. Let's see what happens. But before QT went nice. up there, he surveyed the Dark Order on the stage. Whoa! Diving back elbow by QT Marshall. He's feeling it, he's feeling it. And you see Evil Uno not happy at all about this. Oh, he's, he's calling oh, for it. Oh, the cutter, diamond cutter. He goes, oh, Cabana rolls Marshall through. Went for the elbow, oh, backbreaker. Flatliner combination cover two. No, no, very, very close though. And you know, we've seen time and again with Allie out of ringside, although she can be a little aggressive with her encouragement, it makes QT take risks. Oh, he's it in makes love him with her. Try new things. He wants to impress a bit. He loves, he loves Allie. He's obsessed with Allie. It's obvious. I don't know if Allie gives a rat's ass about him. My opinion, just my opinion on their love life. Oh, Cabana. Series of right hands to the jaw. Oh, oh, oh. Flip, oh. flop, and fly. There's QT Marshall on roller skates right now. And again, Cabana looking to the dark order for instruction. Oh, he got caught. What for the flying apple? Oh. Instead, Marshall counters. No. Allie thought the victory was going right to QT. She was kind of low with the ref. And it was, it was in that time when Colt was looking at Dark Order asking, well, what do I do next? That it gave QT the moment to take advantage and reverse that. Went for the diamond cutter. Nice counter by Colt Cabana. And oh, look hold at on. That. Uno. And what the? Grayson. Oh, look. Ref, ref is ref still maneuver. Oh, oh, my God. A thunderous knee strike by Stu Grayson. Oh, and he just leveled QT. Referee had never seen what happened. What a shot that was on in the face area. Of the oh! oh man. And there it is, the rolling clothesline. Just one, like two, Brody Lee, three. Man. Just like Brody Lee. And the winner of this match. Boom, boom, boom. Cabana. Taz, you're exactly right. That discus clothesline, just like Mr. Brody Lee. But Veda. It was that knee strike from Grayson that really set Cabana up for success. Absolutely, and, and, and the referee, Paul Turner, he, he didn't see anything. Here comes the replay of that. Oh my gosh! Just drove his knee right through his face. There's that discus clothesline, and that's it.
Taz, you may, well, you might like their methods. Other people may not. But one thing you can't argue with is Dark Order. Deadly effective here tonight. Yeah, no, I respect it. I respect what they do. I respect that they work as a unit. And they all stand as one. You know, they, they, I'll, be, I'll go with the numbers. Just a few weeks ago, they solidified their union as the initiative, but now things have broken down between Peter Avalon and Brandon Cutler. They will go one-on-one -on -one next here on Dark. This bout is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Leva Bates from Carson City, Nevada, weighing 182 pounds, the librarian, Peter Avalon. Peter Avalon, not getting any respect from Justin Roberts there, who was shushing him, but yes. uh, Justin still plowed through and did his ring intro. Well, yes, Justin does a case. Of I mean, he's a professional. He goes, goes straight forge ahead. And his opponent, from Rancho Cucamonga, California, weighing 192 pounds, Brandon Cutler. What's with the, uh, I know Excalibur, I'm sure you know all about it, or Vader knows. What's with the gimmick mask? What is this mask? What is this supposed to be? Uh, help spot me up. Uh, it's a dragon mask, Taz. It's a dragon mask, Taz. Oh, wow. That, that for somebody that must doesn't, be an echo in here. For somebody that doesn't visit the pay window. Has never visited the pay window. <laughs> right. Brandon Cutler's gear gets more elaborate week after week. It does. I love his gear. I just don't know the backstory of it. No, it's, it's, cool. it's, it's, it looks really cool. But right now, he and Avalon, who were oh. Oh, they used to be buddies, used to be partners, teaming up as the initiative now, going at it. Hammer and tongs here. Well, right now, Peter Avalon, who has actually the worst record in AEW, 0 and 26, where Cutler is second to worst with 0 and 25. Well, one of these Just two men. Them over. Yeah, 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 no, them over. One, yeah. One of these two men will end their losing streak here tonight. This is a, a huge opportunity. It's a great point. We're gonna, it's gonna be wit. It's gonna be history here made tonight. That's a great point. Taz, as one of the more fiscally minded members of the yes. oh, beautiful butterfly suplex there by Avalon, who covers one. Oh. Talking about my fiscal abilities? Uh, so, so, Avalon and Cutler teamed up. They gave themselves a tag team name as the initiative. Right. They got shirts up on Shop AEW, and right. then two weeks later, they broke up. Well, that's a royalty issue right there. So right there. Cover there. I have a funny feeling maybe they were not selling a plethora of shirts. I don't know, I'm just saying with the records they've had. So what are you tr trying to figure if there's a vig involved with each other, how, how, that, that type of thing, what's going on with it? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I'm just you saying. You got a lawyer sitting here, they're, right? Maybe but, she knows. However, now they're collector's items. Oh, oh, oh. that's a good point. That's, that's Looking excellent. on the bright side, I don't think there's a lot of bright side for either of these two, though, in the past couple weeks. As you said, they were on a losing streak as a tag team. Leva Bates accompanied Peter Avalon out to the ring, but she's... She's very cautious in her support. Oh, oh. Chope Suicida by Cutler, driving Avalon the back of his head into those steel ring barricades. And she, there she, she's pleading with Brandon Cutler. She just, she seems torn, is, is honestly the best way to put it. She just seems conflicted. She's checking on Peter here. I don't think Leva gives a rat's ass about Cutler. I disagree with you, Veda Scott. Oh, wow, great move there by oh, Avalon. Wow. I really think there's a romantic thing going on with both librarians. I don't care what anybody says. But right here, she's checking on Brandon Cutler here. And, oh, oh, oh that well, that's was not, not that's, necessary. That was not nice at all. That was rough. Well, that just goes to show the bad blood between these two men is Matt and Nick Jackson. The Young Bucks looking on as their best friend, Brandon Cutler. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Going to war with Avalon. And really, the dissension in the initiative, it didn't stem to me so much from the losing. I'm sure that was a factor, but the fact oh, the that... Blood, Avalon. Oh, Tope there by Avalon after the momentary distraction. But from Leva Bates. An unintentional distraction, I think. It's just, I, I can't figure this out, these dynamics here, because I don't think the dissension in the initiative was necessarily because of losing. Oh. I think it was because Peter Avalon was willing to do whatever was necessary, and that is just not Brandon Cutler's game. Swing and a miss there. Avalon, hook of the near leg. No. You sound like such a lawyer. I My head is spinning right now from that. 25-minute soundbite you just had, Veda well, Scott. I'm, I'm trying to figure this all out. There's so many just personal dynamics here. Okay. Right. I mentioned the Young Bucks standing by at ringside. They would love to see Brandon Cutler pick up his first victory in All Elite Wrestling. If you want to learn more about the relationship between Brandon Cutler and the Young Bucks, 
Check out the Bucks book coming out this fall from the backyard to the big leaves leads the Young Bucks book. They put me over in the book, they mentioned me? Um, no, but I'm still looking for them to mention me, so. Ooh, wow, you know them well. Anyway, look, see, I told you there's some tension with these two. Youngbucksbook.com, you can pre-order it right now. Oh, Peter Avalon has Talk about books, book. yeah. He's got the Webster's exercise, super size dictionary or something. That was I believe that was Stephen King's The Stand. Oh, oh, The Stand. And wow. now Cutler, though. And she wouldn't be able to do it. Driving reverse DDT! No! Oh, Cutler almost went 1 and 25. He just missed. God. Almost like a version of the, the Emerald Frosian. Mm. Mitsuharu Masawa's finishing move. Yeah, let's take Check a look at your point right on the back of the head, neck area. That is nasty. And Cutler with Avalon up on the shoulders. The Argentine backbreaker position. But now, ooh, double on the hooks here. Oh, oh, sits down with the Tiger Driver. One, two, no! Again, so close. Tough move to kick out of that Tiger Driver because you, when you stacked up pin, everything's so tightly packaged, but Cutler able to get out. And Avalon did a good job putting the boots over the shoulders of Cutler, despite Cutler being a little lankier. Oh, the martinis! Ooh. Ooh -hoo. Well done. No cover, though. Instead, split leg. Oh! He goes for the split leg. Moonsault, cover, two. No! Oh. Man. Man, these guys are just, like you said, at the top of this thing, x Cowboy, an opportunity to, you know, not be winless. Really change around your entire AEW career. Get some momentum, possibly. And now Avalon charging into the corner, double boots up by Cutler. Cutler escapes between the top and middle rope. Oh, he's rangy. Cutler springboard. Here we go. Oh, big elbow. Beautiful elbow drop. Cover one, two. Got him. Oh. He was trying to cradle ahead, but Avalon was smart, keeping the back of his head on the canvas. Veda, in your estimation, what does Cutler have to do to put away Peter Avalon? I don't want to say this, but he might need to stoop down to Peter Avalon's strategies as of late. I don't know, like Brandon Cutler's downfall has been he refuses to play dirty. Mm. Yeah, you gotta play dirty sometimes. I mean, once in a while you do. Taz, you wouldn't I, know anything about no, that. No, that's not my style, you know. And Avalon and Cutler up on the top rope. Cutler looking to bring Avalon back in the hard way, but Avalon senses the danger. And Leva Bates on the outside just begging them to just come down. Yeah, she's trying to play peacemaker in this uh, yeah, I this rivalry. Correct. Yeah, you know, Vader, you said that earlier, and you were correct. I was wrong. See, I'm man enough to admit that. She looks very concerned, Vader. You can see that. See, two men are. She just, I think she just didn't want this match to happen. She just didn't want this team to break up at all. It, it felt like they were right on the cusp of securing their first victory as a, as a tag team, and the initiative, and both men spilling to the floor. Yeah, both both athletes definitely landed hard on the outside. Referee's counting here. Leva, oh, you gotta be careful, you don't get counted out, but one of these guys here can count it out. Leva Bates pacing between Cutler and Avalon. Cutler up to his feet. And now Avalon, Ooh. oh, continuing the fight on the outside. Referee Paul Turner up to a count of seven. Oh no, he's- a Avalon. Oh, oh, he's got, Cutler's got it. Nope. He, never, he never broke the plane of the bottom rope. Oh, oh that's oh. it. Are you kidding me? A double count out. Ladies and gentlemen, what? both men have been counted out. But that. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. This, this is for the first time ever we've had a double, double count, count, count out in AEW. They're both appalled. They can't believe what just happened. Both men looking for their first victory, but both men cost each other the opportunity. Both men still don't have a victory. And leave it, leave it just trying to end this. and. Avalon Cut. walking off without Leva Bates by his side. But but Cutler just walked off too. Oh. And uh, Vanda, go give her a hug. Well, Leva Bates left alone in the ring. Get a books for her. She'll hug a book later on. And check this out. Coming up next on Dark, best friends in action. This is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, at a combined weight of 401 pounds, the team of Max Stardom and Dante Smiley. 
Getting our first look at Max Stardom in the front. Dante Smiley in the back. And oh man, Taz, that's a jacket to wear on a night like this. Yeah, that, I mean, that type of full type of mink or raccoon, whatever that is, that's what you want to wear in this kind of heat. That really, you want to bring in the humidity into your body and get some kind of a, a sheen and a and funk it, on you. Trap it all in Trap there. it all in, get a little funky odor going. That's hardcore stuff. And their opponents, at a combined weight of 418 pounds, Chuck Taylor, Trent, Best Friends. Well, best Friends, looking intense, looking fired up. And this week on Dynamite, they will be facing Santana and Ortiz in that parking lot brawl. Yeah, what? this is this is all business for best friends here. All right, now I agree with you on that, Veda. And the deal is, Stardom and Smiley, this is their debut for both of these athletes, and they got to deal with a very motivated, looking for momentum, best friends. Tough. Yeah, tough, uh, tough card to draw. If you're Max Stardom, Collar Noble tie up there, Chuck Taylor, back and Stardom up into the ropes. Well, Chuck and Trent going into this parking lot brawl, they absolutely cannot afford to lose. Just in terms of the, the psychological disadvantage they would be at, they can't have it happen. So if I'm Max Stardom and Dante Smiley, I don't know. I don't know what I have to do to beat them. Well, tonight. no, but to, to what you're saying, though, Maybe like this. if you're Smiley and Stardom, they, they have no pressure on them. And that's, the, that's oh. kind of what the point, inadvertently, you're making that point, Vader, right? There's no pressure on, on, you know, on, the, on Stardom and Smiley. The pressure's on best friends to win the match. Right, and sometimes when you have so much pressure, that's where you slip up, Taz. I mean, yes. I'm sure you've seen that happen before. Never happened to me, but I know some people that are... I mean, you've seen it happen to other some people. Some people yeah. maybe I, in yeah. the ring with you, for oh, example. Oh, yes, every time I won. And Trent delivering a big elbow strike to the jaw. Oh. Dante smiling. Oh! But, and you're, you know, you got, you know, you're right about the pressure, but guys, you guys know this. Guys like best friends, both these, you know, Trent and Chuck, these guys, they love pressure. They're so experienced. Is so locked in, and they just they, they can't wait to get their hands on Santana and Ortiz. Right, but when you're talking about being locked in, you know, you need to hope that they're not too locked in on Santana and Ortiz because they are in a match right now. Right, I understand. They look like they're in pretty good control, though, Vader, right? That was, you know what I'm saying? But I hear what you're saying. You're trying to be that count, well, count and there, point, well, count, and point, point, count. She's point. trying to be the optimist where you're trying to be the pessimist, Taz. I am, I am always trying to be the optimist, and Taz doesn't know the meaning of the word. We established that with your inspirational sayings. Thank you. But they are the number two ranked tag team in AEW for a reason, Whoa. and they're proving that. Wow, hell of a leapfrog there, and dropkick. Tremendous leaping ability there by Dante Smiley, who's, uh, instead of capitalizing on Trent, he's uh, trying to... Uh, trying to bask in the moment, which is a strategy oh. that backfired. Got caught, that knee strike, that running knee was whoo, heavy, heavy by Trent. Taz, you know how those boys from Strong Island roll. Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 so Trent, he's from the Suff, Suffolk County, which we call Scruffick County, a little scruffy. Trent, scruffy out there, bro. Trent loves when we call it Strong Island. But he knows Scruffick County, he knows what I'm saying. And his mom, Sue, does as well. There's a lot of people with minivans out there in Suffolk, by the way. Is that what the, the scruffy people drive as minivans? Yeah, beat up old minivans like Vader. Oh! <laughs> I will have you know that she owns a 2006 Plymouth Sundance in pristine condition. All right, let me tell me you she something. Had a, Vader, you told me you had a freaking minivan. You never know when you're going to need to haul something, Excalibur. All right, all right. It's a handy vehicle to have. I'm not I'm not disparaging minivans. I'm not Taz. Put the seats down. You can do some, some pallets of plants. You never know. Hey, listen, Chrysler wants to give me a free vehicle. I'm all ears. Yeah. A minivan, scooter, don't even care. And look at this, though, Trent. Trent taking his time here. Yeah, a lot of aggression here from Trent. And uh, he wants to wants, he wants to be hit. He wants to feel that hit to get him going more. See, that's, 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 that's exactly what Trent's going for. And that one shot from Trent shut Smiley down, put him back on the canvas. Smiley might be a little bit out on his feet when that, oh. the, the, the oh. pick a four on Just him. Just rapid so many... fire shots. Well, and when you're about to be stepping, I almost said stepping into the ring, but it's not the ring. It's into the parking lot Correct. with Santana and Ortiz. You know, you want to take the time to just lay it in to just get some shots in, maybe as practice. Oh. However, 
That's Not so effective right now. Yeah, flipping neckbreaker there. And now Stardom tags in. Positioning himself opposite the ring from Trent, but Trent, a little bit of a bipasso there. Sent, oh, Ooh. Ooh, great move there by Stardom. And oh, gets the boot up into the face of Trent. Cazadora there, and oh, into the Bulldog. Great attack, but he's appealing to the crowd when he needs to keep his focus on his opponent. Yeah, Stardom definitely had, uh, well, I should say had, he had oh, strength, <laughs> he had him, he had him, but Putin and that back throw was beautiful. Beautiful suplex right there by Trent. And Stardom is clutching the back of his head. Trent. Able to make a tag, though. He kind of dazedly rolled his way into the corner. Trent changed things around, changed the fortunes of his team on a moment's notice. And Dante Smiley sent to the outside by Chuck Taylor. Follow, Chuck's following him out there. He's not done. <clears throat> and sends Smiley into the barricade. But you know, again, get some reps in for a oh! Oh, oh, oh! Spear was heavy, man. What a spear. The best friends are looking aggressive. They are looking focused. And Chuck Taylor charges in, back elbow. Tag out to Trent, the legal man. See right here that oh spear my gosh. assisted by Chuck. Great hit, just a full hit. And now by inside Trent. the ring. Oh, that half and half. Oh, Soul man. food half and half combination. And Chuck Taylor said, Santana Ortiz, that's coming for you. Dante Smiley nearly got a full rotation. Oh, oh stuff, pile driver. And Trent oh. sits out the jumping pile driver. Cover. One, two, three. The winners of this match. Best friends. You saw another level, guys, of intensity by the best friends right there. And we alluded to it throughout the match. They're going into. Out of, they're going out of their element on Dynamite against Santana Ortiz in that parking lot. So they have to go to this level of rage, of violence, of intensity. We just witnessed it. Look at their eyes. Look at Trent just oh, yeah. staring directly into the camera. Taz, you're exactly right. That, that parking oh. lot brawl is not a place where no. either, either Chuck or Trent are comfortable, but they know they need to rise to the occasion if they are going to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Santana and Ortiz. Well, the things that Santana and Ortiz did to Sue's minivan, what they've said about Sue, yeah, I mean, it's just some heavy stuff. So this thing's going to get crazy on Dynamite in that parking lot. Yeah, I cannot wait for this week's edition of Dynamite Parking Lot Brawl, Santana and Ortiz, Taylor and Trent. And tonight in our AEW Dark main event, it's the Dark Order taking on Billy and Austin Gunn, and they're teaming up with Private Party. Join the Dark Order. This is an eight-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first, at a total combined weight of 813 pounds, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds, Join Dark, the Dark Order. Order. How impressive did Mr. Brody Lee look last week on Dynamite when he defended the TNT Championship against Dustin Rhodes? Uh, super impressive, and it really was, uh, he's just dominant. It's gonna be so tough to dethrone Mr. Brody Lee of that TNT Championship. And you know, a lot of pressure on the Dark Order team members here in this eight-man tag team matchup. Mr. Brody Lee would love for them to keep up the winning ways. And their opponents first from Orlando, Florida, at a combined weight of 476 pounds, Billy and Austin, the Gun Club. Uh, you see what just happened next, Cal, but that's your fault. Tell the audience what's in my hand. That Austin Gun game to me that pissed me off. Austin Green dropping off a winter green. Austin, Austin Gun dropping. I, I, I didn't want to correct Brian you. Brian Austin Green. I didn't want to is correct part you. Of Gun Club. Apparently. I didn't want to correct you because oh my the god, YouTube, I'd be so excited. The YouTube comments you're gonna get buried for calling him Austin Green. What do you think about this, Seth? We got we got Colt now here too. We got we got three of them now. You like it? I, the you guns, love it. It's just a, love he, it. Billy just keeps reproducing. I was so verklempt, I, I messed up. Austin Gunn dropped off a piece of winter green gum to Taz. Yeah. Taz is now officially a part of Gum Club. Yeah, we'll fix it in post. Oh my god, is that private party? <laughs>
chewing the gum. Uh, I never yeah. done this before. Co- commentary. I'm gonna probably just spit it out. Joining them from a location where you need an invitation. At a combined weight of 24 ounces of vodka cranberry, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Private Party! Well, I was wondering how Austin and Billy might coexist with Private Party, but based on their reaction to the entrance alone, uh, I think they're going to do just fine. Yeah, they're all very happy. And, you know, that's got kind of, to see, you can see uh, one of the gun, Austin Guns dancing, Mark Quinn smiling, Isaiah loves it. They're all just, you know, happy go lucky. Everything's a holiday when you're one of these poor guys. You know? It seems like uh, you hate to see people happy. Because why be happy? Because somebody's going to piss you off a little bit a few minutes later anyway. So why waste the energy of being happy when you, something's going to upset you? You're going to get bad news. Something's going to happen. You're going to look on social media. Someone's going to bury you. So why be happy ever? Why? Quote, why be happy ever, Taz, is probably my favorite Tazism. Really? I mean, I had a thing in my prime where basically it was simple. Behind the scenes, I hate everyone. Do you remember those, like, chicken? Oh, I don't, I don't know if that was behind the scenes. I think that was well known. Chicken yeah. soup for the soul, like inspirational books. You should I write actually, one of those. I like tortellini soup more than chicken soup. There you go. You should tortellini write one of those soup inspirational for the books. All right, I got to find a good lawyer to make sure I get that for thing done. For the pessimist right. in us all. <laughs> tortellini soup for the soul. Look for it <laughs> on shelves at some point in the near future. Next to the new Gum Club book. <laughs> Taz, be sure that uh, you go on and acquire that URL here tonight. <laughs> Don't let anybody squat on it. You'll yeah, have to pay for it. That's a good point. That's a, actually a real good point. Oh, you see right here, Reynolds just. Alex Reynolds. Careful. Be careful with Billy Gunn. Billy eats the boot to the midsection by Reynolds. But that's, nope. a, that's a lot of nope. a lot of mass to Irish whip into the row. Oh! Covered. Lateral press. Barely a one count there on Reynolds. And I personally, and I know I, I say personally, but I'm not just speaking for myself. I love these eight-man tag matches we have here in AEW. I think it's a testament to just the depth of the tag division that not only do we have these traditional tag matches, but then we get these these weird combinations. Yeah, yeah I like, I'm with you. I agree with you on that a thousand percent. I'm a fan of it also, of it for sure. Taz, when you came to AEW, you know, it was amazing. Ago. It was amazing when I came for it everyone was, here. Yeah. But I can yeah, continue putting Great, you Greatest day of my life. On that national holiday. I know JR loved when I got here. But anyway, I digress. But Did you ever imagine that you would see Private Party and Aust- uh, Billy and Austin Gunn teaming up together in an eight-man tag team match? No, I thought it would be Private Party and Austin Green teaming up. For Brian Austin Green. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I'm joking. But no, I did not. I never would have expected that. Seriously. Nice sunset flip. Watch the drop kick. Wow. Great tag team work by Private Party, only getting a two count. But then we also have a group like Dark Order, and we never know exactly what combination of members we're right. going to get on any given night. Every match is different, and that is just truly exciting to me. <laughs> and I remember when Dark, when I first came here to AEW, and Excalibur, you've been here before me, but Dark Order was a completely different, like, feel. It's changed since Mr. Brody Lee has taken control of it, as yes. you guys know. They've really upped their recruitment efforts. They've expanded it. They've added uh, Anna J to their ranks. Whoa! Reynolds sent over the top. Good job by Austin. Cover hook the far leg. Two count. And uh, thus far, Billy, Austin Gunn, Isaiah Cassie, and Mark Quinn have all tagged in. Oh, I was going to say, Alex Reynolds had not had been the only member of Dark Order to be in this matchup, but that changed on a moment's notice, and they just swarmed Austin Gunn. And this is where Dark Order really shines. It's just absolutely overwhelming their opponents, be it on the outside or in the corner here. I mean, when, once you are stuck in that corner, I mean, yeah. you ha- it's just desperation at that point. Well, to, to get your out. point, Vinny, you know, it's just, it's it's the numbers game, right? It's just you're outnumbered. They're going to make sure they're going to have that strength of numbers. You see, Evil Uno trying to break the fingers and hand of Austin Gunn right there. And Austin did the right thing, tried to get over to his dad or to get over to Private Party, but. Yeah, literally, literally anybody. But Dark Order doing a great job isolating Austin Gunn in their corner. And th- the thing about Dark Order is you have Silver and Reynolds, who are a very highly efficient tag team. And then you also have Uno and Grayson, who are. Oh, oh look, look at that. Back slide. Slide. Yeah. Cover. Only a two. And. For, for wow. my money, 
Uno and Grayson are one of the best tag teams in the entire world, and they have been for a very long time. We're seeing it now uh, more and more. But I mean, just to have, like you said, those two established teams, plus we have five and 10 that are starting to establish themselves as a tag team. I and mean, look at that, Cassidy mocking. Mock, mock action there, yeah. Mocking Dark Order there. That, uh, that claw, that fist, I'm not sure. And now look at Billy and Austin Gunn getting into the yeah, they're doing that, uh, the uh, the dark order pose. See, Billy's trying to get it down. Billy always since he made a career of making fun of people and mocking people. That's what he does. He's a bully. I mean, in my opinion, that's just me. Look, you would know better than anybody else. Oh, hey, look at that, Tiara. I spent there. a lot of years in locker room with that guy. Trust oh, me. Oh no, I meant because you're a bully. Oh, oh, what oh. the hell was that comment? All right, watch out. John Silver, the Ooh. kick to the spine of Mark Quinn. Quinn ducks under the clothesline. And oh wow! Elevated up, and the drop kick takes down Alex Reynolds. Elevated up and caught him with a shotgun drop kick, and watch. Oh, Stu got lit up with that knee. Quinn almost with eyes in the back of his head. As Evil Uno there grabbing the leg of Mark Quinn. Referee is with John Silver right now, and referee did not see what just happened. Yeah, Reynolds with that that elbow strike sending Quinn out to the outside. But that's that numbers game, Taz, that you're yes. talking yes. about. Yes, exactly. Pinfall Quinn able to kick out. They're just such cohesiveness with the Dark Order. And as, uh, you know, we've all been chatting up here during this match that, you know, but how often do you see the gun club team up with, you know, private party, right? right. So it's like that, that there's going to be a lack of cohesiveness there. And, and the other thing you have to keep in mind is that Dark Order are wrestling this match to, to keep Mr. Brody Lee, uh, to stay in the good graces of Mr. Brody happy. Lee. Word is happy, yeah. right? Oh! Big elbow drop by Grayson. Cover, two, no. We saw how Grayson laced his right leg in there, cover again. And to your point, uh, Quinn was smart enough to bring his knees in, because he knew, he felt what Grace, Grayson was trying to do. It's the best way to pin a guy when you cradle up his leg, legs with one arm and one leg at the same time, or both legs. You see another look at that, Grayson oh. elevating high, dropping that elbow across the throat. Yeah. Cover. I love that shot. I'm so glad uh, our director and production team listened to me when I told them about that in a meeting that we should do that shot. They're great listeners. Oh, are I'm running things around right here. Silver. Silver using his entire body weight to try to make that cover. But then did a great job when uh, when Quen kicked out. He used the arm of Quen to transition him down onto his stomach. You've got to be careful, John Silver. When he's behind you, he'll catch you with a choke. He's also lethal kicks. Powerful, stout young athlete. Right hands to the ribs by Mark Quinn. Backs up so and look oh, at that. Like a bull. Just bull rushed him, yeah, back to the corner. Yeah, nothing pretty there, just anything to get him back into the corner. But those are the tag team in instincts of Dark Order, of Silver and Reynolds, Veda. And, and just right there, any momentum that Mark Quinn had gained, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, no, I agree. You're right, Veda, just shut him down. Right now, Quinn just in grave danger here in the corner of the Dark Order. Evil Uno. With Mark Quinn up, delayed Ooh. vertical suplex. Oh, oh whoa, I thought he was gonna give him a brain buster yeah, there. It was a sheer drop, one, yeah. two. Cassidy there to break it up. Good thing by Cassidy, too. Yeah, to save his partner, for sure. You know, he, he, you know Isaiah knows more than you know, Billy and Austin when his partner's in trouble. That's the, just like Billy would know when his son Austin's in trouble more. You know, you know your partner. Right, and obviously either Billy or Austin could make the tag here, but it's going to be Mark Quinn's own partner who's going to be trying the hardest. Oh, look at that. Oh, they have that dynamic. Well, this I, could be it. Could I, this I, be I, it? I think whoever Quinn can get his hand on is going to get in there, but I get your point. But again, no. great tag team instincts by Silver and Reynolds diving on the legs of Quinn to prevent him from tagging. Smart right there. <laughs> Uno not <laughs> wanting any piece of Billy. But he eliminated two men off the apron of that team. That was smart by Evil Uno. Trying to bait Billy into the ring and F referee Edwards preventing. I wonder, I wonder if they ever talked to Billy about Dark Order. Like, Who's they? If Dark Order. If oh. Dark Order's ever given him a flyer or anything like that. Oh, the join? Oh! oh. Tell me you're speaking of Vader. Please explain. I don't know what you're saying to me over here. Have they tried to recruit Billy? That's what I wanted. It's just simple words. Whoa! Oof. At least what? German. Mark Quinn. Diving out of it, and oh, Stu Grayson, nobody there holding there for him. There it is. Billy was there. And Billy doing some, dishing out some right hands to the face of Dark Order. Catching everybody. And now, 
Oh, tilt a whirl, slam by Billy. Big power, big power. And Evil Uno sent to the outside. Oh, wow! The point of the elbow strike right to the top of Billy's head. And look at the strength of Grayson to hoist Billy up on the shoulders. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! Uh -oh. Sends out with it. One! He's got two. it. Two! Billy's got no. it! Oh. Oh. Stu Grayson, though, had him fully up on his shoulders. That was incredible. Yeah, good power for sure, but you gotta credit Billy for countering out. Huh. And now Grayson was very nearly about to have his night ended by Billy, but Evil Uno doing the smart thing, grabbing the leg of Billy and sending him into the barricade. Look at Isaiah. Oh! Guillotine on the top rope. Cassidy and oh, Reynolds. Shot. Wow. Good job by Reynolds. Great cravat into a neck breaker there by Reynolds. Mark Quinn comes in and going over that top. Oh, oh my. my. Wow. It's like a reverse slice bread number two. Oh, but John Silver just drops him. Kicks, kicks, him. kicks round kicks, side kicks. Whoa, tremendous strength on the brain buster by Silver. And now Austin Gunn into the match. But now, Dark Silver. Order, yeah, Dark Order shut him down almost immediately. Yeah, yeah, they did. But look at Austin. Austin's on the hot oh. pin. Double clothesline. Excellent. And Grayson. Dodges the clothesline attempt, back flipping kick. Boot to the midsection by Billy. Oh, ho, ho, he just planted Grayson. Uno. Ooh. Big boot by Evil Uno took down Billy. Evil Uno in the right place, right time. Make sure he make, gets that legal tag from his partner. Austin Gunn running elbow on Reynolds. Diving uppercut on Uno. And now Silver comes in. Sent to the outside by Austin Gunn. Whoa. Austin elevates up and over the top. Goes hip for a hip toss. Nope. Top is attempted. They've got uh -oh. Austin up on the, on the shoulders. Fatality! Grayson covers. One, two, three. The winners of this match, Dark Order. Well, that was a hell of a match. With yeah, Gun Club and Private Party were impressive, but Veda Dark Order presented a unified front. Right, once they, once they got going, they're just unstoppable. We, I, you can't stop someone who's just so united in their goals. Although very impressive, I think, showing. Here we go, look at that replay, yeah, fatality. That fatality. It's beautiful, just to see right there how Austin, you're not kicking at it, I don't care who you are. Such impact jacks your spine and, you know, your spinal cord, I should say. And Dark Water, always dominant, always impressive. Mr. Brody Lee, the TNT champ's got to be happy. Yeah, he's a tough man to impress, but I've been, I would imagine that even he would love this victory by Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds here tonight to cap off Dark. Well, thank you for joining us here tonight, but this week coming up on Dynamite, we've got the parking lot brawl between Best Friends and Santana and Ortiz. FTR, the AEW World Tag Team Champions, will go face to face with Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus. The NWA World Women's Championship will be on the line as Thunder Rosa defends the title against Ivelisse. The inner circles, Chris Jericho and Jake Hager, will take on private party. Jericho and Hager said they want to climb the ranks of the tag team division here, but this could be a pivotal test for them. Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, will be in action on Dynamite for the first time since All Out. You do not want to miss it. SCU's Frankie Kazarian takes on one half of the former AEW World Tag Team Champions, Hangman Adam Page. All this and so much more on Dynamite this week. You don't want to miss it. Thank you, everyone. Good night.